What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to color pretty much anything in Procreate. So as you can see I just have a blank canvas here with just a circle on it and that's literally the only layer that I have. And I'm going to show you how to color this basic circle here in Procreate. So what I'm going to do is make sure this layer is on reference. So I'm going to tap on the thumbnail and hit reference. And that way if I make a whole another layer I can just color drop and it'll still fill that circle but on a whole another layer. So that's really cool. But I am gonna make another layer. I'm gonna make sure this is underneath because I want the line work to be on top of everything. So I'm gonna select any color here. You can too if you're following along. I'm gonna select like this aquamarine color. I'm gonna click and drag that. And now it's on its own layer. So what I'm gonna do now is make a whole nother layer. And I'm gonna make this layer into a clipping mask. So I'm gonna tap on that thumbnail and hit clipping mask and now I'm free to draw inside this circle without worrying about going outside the lines. So now what I'm going to do is go up to my brushes. I'm going to use my big huge large airbrush and I'm going to make sure my color is on black. And I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to make sure that brush is still on and what I'm going to do is go around the circle but this right hand portion of the circle will have a lot of shades and we'll add more shades later in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to apply a large area of this black to the right hand side of the circle. And then a very minimal part over here. Because the circle, the circle's light source would be right here where this dot is. But we're using a black for now. We'll use a white to put that in later, but for now we're just going to use the black to determine the shades. So we're just going to fill that area right quick. And there we go. So now what I'm going to do is go up to my magic wand tool, I'm going to hit Gaussian blur, I'm going to blur that black, and that's looking pretty good. Okay, so this is what our circle looks like now, but now we're going to help blend those colors in with the initial blue. So let's go back to my layers, I'm going to take this blue layer, and I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to use this layer underneath it so that way this isn't disabled. So we're going to go up here, drag that to the top. And as you can see, the black is gone, but that's okay. It's not completely gone because it's still here. So what I'm going to do is take our first layer, tap on the thumbnail, and hit select. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom and hit invert. That way we select everything outside of this circle. And now we're going to go to the black layer. And then we're going to go up here to tap the arrow. And then we're going to drag it off the screen. And now let's look at our thumbnail. So now we have the black portion inside of the circle and nothing outside. So now we're going to disable clipping mask on this layer and it'll do the same thing to the layer above it and that's okay. So go to clipping mask and uncheck that box. Okay. And now we're going to make this top layer visible. And now we're going to transform that into a clipping mask. So tap on the thumbnail and hit clipping mask. And as you can see, there's still not a change, but not yet. So we're gonna make sure that layer is still selected. We're gonna go to our magic wand tool and we're gonna go to hue, saturation, brightness. So tap on that. And then we're just gonna reduce the brightness like that. So you see how that black color is now the dark version of this blue. You can have that blue being light with minimal shading or have lots of contrast like this, you can do it however. But I'm gonna leave it like this because we'll be applying some darker shades to this circle. And now since we have a dark blue version of this initial layer, what we can do now is merge these two layers together and see. But what we're gonna do is the same thing. Instead, we're gonna apply shades to the bottom portion of the circle, the place where there's a lot of shades. So let's make a whole nother layer and we're gonna keep that black color. Make sure my big, huge, large airbrush is on and we're gonna apply that black to this part of the circle. But I know it's outside the circle, but we can do what we did earlier. So let's go to our initial blue layer, tap on the thumbnail, hit select, go to invert that's down here at the bottom, and then just drag it off the screen. And now we're left with that black portion, which will be the darkest shades of our subject. So now we're gonna take our magic wand tool, go to Gaussian blur, and we're gonna blur that. And 
And once you find a good stopping point, you can tap the magic wand tool again. And as you can see, there's still some black that kind of leaks out of that circle. But we just gotta do the same step again. So select the bottom, invert, make sure we're on the black layer, drag it off the screen. And there we go. Now it's inside the circle and it's there to stay. But now we gotta make the darkest shades the same color as the base color. So let's take our bottom layer, we're gonna duplicate that, and we're gonna move it up so that way it's above our darkest shades layer. And as you can see, there is a big change because this layer is on top of everything, which means our shades are not visible until we disable that. But now we're gonna transform this selected layer into our clipping mask layer. So let's tap on a thumbnail, clipping mask, and now you can see that there's some shades but then there's a lighted portion where we apply the black. But that's because we haven't darkened it yet to create a darker blue. So let's make sure that layer is still selected. I'm gonna go to our magic wand, hue, saturation, brightness, and we're just gonna change the brightness. I'm just gonna make that a little bit darker than what we did before. We're not gonna make it completely black. And I think that's a good spot. Okay, actually I probably ended up making it exactly black. So I just undid it and now I'm just gonna try that again. I think that's a dark enough blue. Not black, but like a dark blue. But now that we're done with that, we can merge the two. And now we have an even darker version of our initial blue. But now we can do the same thing with a white. So let's make a whole nother layer. And we're gonna go up to our color and select white. And now I'm making sure our big, huge, large airbrush is on. We're gonna drop this white onto the place where there's light shining upon our subject, which is right here in the center. Well, close enough to the center, but you know what I mean. And now we're gonna help this white blend in with the blue. So let's go to our magic wand, Gaussian blur. I'm gonna drag it from left to right to help blur it. See how that white is kind of blending in with the blue? But we don't want there to be a complete white unless the light shining on this subject is that bright. But oftentimes that won't be the case. So to help this white kind of blend in with the blue, what we can do is go to the white layer and with two fingers, we're gonna tap on this layer and then it gives us the option to reduce the opacity of it. When we reduce the opacity of it, we make it a little more transparent. So I'm gonna drag it from right to the left to make the opacity lower. And now you guys can see that there's a lighter version of that blue. And the only color we used was a white. So what I'm gonna do is add some reflected light onto our subject. And I have a special way of doing it because I learned this on my own. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the background color a whole different color. And this you can make any color, but I'm just gonna make it something other than a white. So let's make it, let's make it this yellow. I like how that looks. Okay, so now let's go back to our layers and we're gonna go back to our line work layer and we're gonna duplicate that. But the reference one will stay at the top. So we're gonna leave that alone. In fact, let's give it a lock. So we're just gonna slide it from right to left and tap lock. And then on the layer underneath it that we just made, we're gonna tap on that thumbnail and hit invert. So that way the black lines on that layer now become a white, like this. Of course we can't see it yet, but that's because we gotta shift it because right now it's underneath the line work layer and we haven't done anything with it. So now let's go to our arrow tool up here and I have my selection on uniform. So that way I can easily make a smaller version of our initial circle. So I'm gonna take this anchor point that's in the bottom right and I'm just gonna reduce it just a little bit just a tiny bit. And as you can see, I provided this highlight without having to do it manually, which makes things a lot easier. But if you go over here to this corner, you can see that there's some white lines that leak outside of this circle. So you can methodically use the eraser tool and erase that, but we're gonna do what we did earlier by going to our base layer, tap on the thumbnail and hit select. Go down here and hit invert. Go back to our white line layer and just drag the rest of it off the screen. So you see how much of white that's there? 
just drag it off the screen. And now since we still have the white selected, what we can do is color drop into this area by the contours of the circle in the highlight. Okay, and that wasn't supposed to happen, so I guess we gotta do it the hard way. A few minutes later. So now we're gonna make the color of this white line a lighter version of our base color blue. So let's go back to our layers again, go to our base layer, slide from right to left, and hit duplicate. Then we're gonna move it all the way up until it's above our white line. And now we're gonna make that into a clipping mask layer. So we're gonna tap the thumbnail on that, hit clipping mask, and there we go. So the white lines on there are now the exact same blue as our base color, but we don't want it to be that. We want it to be a lighter version of that blue. So what we can do now is go up to our magic wand tool, but making sure that layer is still selected. Go up to our magic wand tool, hue saturation brightness, and instead of making the brightness darker like we did earlier, we're actually gonna move it towards the white. So let's move it towards the right and see how it's a lighter version of that blue now. But we don't wanna go all the way to the white, so that's why I'm doing this very slowly. And now I'm liking what this looks like, so now we can take the magic wand tool off by clicking it again. And that's looking pretty good, and this is what it looks like now on the layers. But now that we're satisfied with that, we can merge it, but if you're not satisfied with it, don't merge it, in case you wanna change the color of the highlight. But for me, I'm gonna merge it. And then what I'm gonna do now is just play around with some more of the shading in case there's something small that I wanna fix. Like down here, I know this kind of shading was off when I painted it at first. So I can just blur that some more. And actually to make it a little bit darker, I can duplicate this layer and make it darker. And if I wanna make it a little bit lighter, I can just, with two fingers, Tap on that layer and just reduce the opacity of it so that way it blends in with the base color that's right underneath it. And then, and then I'm just gonna resize the layer with the darker shades. Make it a little bit larger. But then with the white, I can always shift that around if I want and then like we did earlier when we added the white, we can reduce the opacity of it as well, or we can make it completely white. And then let's do the same thing real quick to add a cast shadow. So I'm gonna make another layer that's underneath everything. Just move it down there so that's in between the background color and the base color. And then I'm gonna switch my color to a black because it's a shadow. And make sure my big, huge, large airbrush is on. Make the size how I want it, and then just draw a shadow. And then I'm gonna go to my magic wand tool, hit Gaussian blur, and just blur the shadow how I want it. And if you wanna resize the shadow or you wanna stretch it or whatever, you can definitely do that. So let's click off of the magic wand tool for a second. Then I'm gonna go to my arrow tool, and then I'm gonna select freeform because I may wanna stretch it, but you can also do that with distort and warp. But oftentimes I may wanna stretch it up or stretch it down. So I'm just gonna do just that. And I think that's looking pretty good. I know that's kinda of off, but you know. But now I'm gonna reduce the opacity of it so that way it blends in with the background, which is this yellow. So two fingers, tap on that layer and then reduce the opacity. And I'm only gonna reduce it so that way the value of that color matches the shades that we added on our subject, which is this darker blue. And I think the value matches about here. So that way I'm not making the shadows too dark or too light. But I also wanna make it underneath our subject. So again, you can reposition that, stretch it if you want, and there we go. But I do hope this tutorial was a little bit helpful for you guys because I learned how to do this on my own. Of course, I know how to paint manually and procreate, but I'll save that for another video. But this is a quick way of doing it. But yeah, that's going to do it for the video. If you guys liked it or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I